Hey, what's that noise in the background? It's a noisy new cat. Yay. So, welcome to this episode, and we're going to be covering one of the things that cigar box guitar builders probably fear the worst next to fretting and wiring, and that is cutting scarf joints to make your neck do this so your tuners sit here. All right. Hey, the noisy cat has been accompanied by the kids speeding down the road, the squawking crow, and the crowing rooster. So we have an orchestra in the background. If that's what that is. Anyway, um, there's videos out there that show you how to make scarf joints with jigs and using uh, saws and automated processes. We're going to do this real simple because I think it's going to help you understand. So if you have a saw, a clamp, and a couple pieces of wood, we're going to show you how to do this. Okay, let's get some business out of the way. First off, the t-shirt is Catfish Keith. Shout out to Catfish Keith, great guitarist. Penny Cahill, his wife, runs things in the background. Great couple. I'm going to give you an iCard popping up right about now. If you love slide guitar, you're going to love Catfish Keith. Next, you might remember a couple episodes back, I had a contest in which if you knew uh, details about the artist shout outs I give in my episodes, you had a chance to win something really cool. Well, someone has won something really cool. Paul Slocum of Bakersfield, California, that's an oil field town, yeah, yeah. Paul Slocum answered the questions. He had the most of them right. He must he either he's an FBI agent or a stalker because he knew more about my videos than I know myself. Anyway, what did Paul win? Yeah, remember when I sat in record store day line with my kid? Well, I bought two Johnny Winter albums, and this one is Johnny Winger, Johnny Winter, King of the Slide Guitar. Open now brand new yes going to paul slocum in bakersfield california yes now kind of a coincidence that back in april i got an email from paul asking me to do an episode about scarf joints and how to make them and guess what paul you're a winner all the way around so let's get to the workbench and start this project okay so let's start off talking about uh the wood you're going to use. Um, I'm going to convert you to the metric system. They couldn't do that to us when we were kids in school, but whatever. Typically, the boards we use for necks are about one and a half inches wide, and then we put uh, other ones on to increase the thickness, or we put fingerboards on the top, or even use something like a yardstick or something like that. So. Uh, the first thing you're going to need is the board you're going to use for the neck and then the headstock is usually typically larger than the other board uh, some of us use uh, the same type of board for for a, a headstock and then just put the angle here but um, I prefer to use a wider board so let's start there we've got board fingerboard something like a fingerboard Okay, let's talk a little bit about the tools we're going to need. We need one of these fine tooth saws. Um, they're available a number of places, fairly cheap. Some use them as fretting saws because the fret groove needs to be about as deep as the teeth. But uh, you can't not have this saw in your arsenal. Next, you're going to need a few clamps like these. You're going to need a T-square. You're going to need a tape measure or uh, some type of measuring stick. Now, how many of you know what half of three and three eighths is? Well, while you're figuring that out, I'm going to run right to my metric ruler and do everything in millimeters. And it makes it really easy. And I'm going to give you some examples of that later. So if you're going to build cigar box guitars, try to get away from this inches and go to this because it's really easy to divide this stuff out and figure out where you're at crux of this lesson what it's really all about is how to take uh, this neck board here 
and cut it so it gives us this angle here and how to take the other side of this angle and put it on the headstock board that's really what this is all about so the first thing we are going to do is we are going to measure 78 millimeters so you go to there's 10 there's 70 and almost to 80 so I'm going to put 78 there and put a mark there and then I'm going to mark this on all four sides of the neck board like so all right there we go 78 millimeters all the way around what's the significant significance of 78 millimeters that's right it's three inches but forget about three inches we're going to use the metric system it's going to work out better for us now we're going to measure the width of the neck we said it was an inch and a half there's an inch and a half but we don't want to do that we want to use millimeters so it is 38 millimeters 38 divided by 2 is 19 so I'm going to come right to this 19 mark right there and make a mark then I'm going to go down past my 78 millimeter line and do another line or mark at 19 then I'm going to take my straight edge I don't like using the t-square or the carpenter square on this because there's not much to tie on to or to set it against right up here and it ends up getting crooked but I'm going to run a, a line that shows me the middle of that right there I'm going to want to do that on both sides there we go 78 millimeters all the way around and halfway across the board 19 millimeters on both sides now I'm going to want to run a line from this corner right here to this corner right here that's 78 millimeters or three inches when I draw a straight line right here that's going to give us this angle we're looking for some people prefer 15 others 17 but I'm going to draw a line here right now just like that I'm going to turn this over and do it the other way except this time I'm going to make sure that I'm going the opposite way from here to here just like that so this angle here this angle here okay now we're setting this one aside and we're going to our headstock board so I am going to measure down 154 millimeters see there's 15 centimeters plus 4 millimeters just 154 and I'm going to make a mark back here like so now what is 154 millimeters it's six inches so what this is going to do is it's going to give us six inches of room ultimately to do what we want to do up here with the headstock and give us a starting point for our corresponding cut that will match this on the neck so now I'm going to mark this all the way around the entire board just like I did on this one I'm going to explain to you why that's necessary here in a minute all right there we go 154 millimeters from here to here marked off all the way around the board now it's really important that I again find the center of this one just like I did the neck board and do that on both sides so this neck board is 64 millimeters wide halfway being 32 I'm going to put a mark there and I'm going to go past uh, the 154 millimeter line and do a mark at 32 I'll take my straight edge again if I try to 
place this up here like this there's not that much room for it to sit it can teeter around my line doesn't end up straight so when doing this I just put my straight edge down and give myself a mark let's flip this over and do that on the other side here There we go, one more time, 154 millimeters from here to here, 32 millimeters from here to here, it's 64 all the way across, corresponding line down the center. So let's explain the significance of these markings. First off, our uh, matchup line for our angle is going to be right here this up here again is going to be for the headstock however we want to cut that out or whatever but there's going to be some grinding to do and some sanding for everything to match up and when you're hand sawing things the likelihood that you're going to be directly on this line is going to be uh pretty rough so when you're sanding on the, on the belt sander later this line being here and the line being in the center are going to help you line things up make sure that your sanding is level if this line is still here as a reference it's easy to see if there's wood built up over in here that needs to be taken down and then later on when it's time to match up everything and glue it together you can uh, use the center line to do that so trust me on that one okay now the tricky part remember i've got a mark here that leaves 154 millimeters of my headstock sticking out up here and this is basically where I want my angles to start so I'm simply going to lay the neck board on top of the headstock board making sure you can see it in the camera and then I'm going to clamp those together like this giving myself some room here because what I am going to do is I'm going to put this in a vise now and making sure that line is there I am going to take this saw right here and cut this line right here very carefully when I'm through this uh, board the neck board I'm going to be in place with this piece gone to use this edge that I've cut out here as a guide to cut through the headstock board. Once I'm all the way through, I can touch this up. This just flips over, matches up to this, which pivots the neck around. So real simple here. You can see I've just got this in a uh, my bench vise at the end there and some clamps. And now let me pull this around where we can see what's going on. I simply have this all marked up where I have this line right here and I'm going to lay the saw right on that line make sure it's straight I'm going to cut all the way through this board once I'm through and this piece is missing the piece will look like this then I'm going to leave this board in place and I'm going to continue to saw all the way down through the headstock board okay there we go I've got this board up on top now using this as a guide I am going to take my saw line it up straight and go all the way down through this board okay there we go this has come off these boards match up exactly and then I'm just going to use this piece and this and flip them over the right way to make sure uh, that I've got the desired angle for my headstock. So one more time, we are cutting an angle on our neck board from here to this mark, going through all the way through the headstock board. And because the angles match up and they're stacked, once we're done, we just flip them over and glue them up. 
So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these angles on a belt sander and I'm going to make sure that they line up uh, with each other and that's just a matter of that's where these lines come in handy so when you're when you're sanding if this line starts disappearing over here long before here that means that you're taking too much off but that's why these lines are really important working these until they're a nice match like so and you can see these lines about match up evenly here. Now I told you earlier that having the center marks is really important later on in the process both in sanding as we see here and now in gluing and lining things up because what we're going to do now is we're going to take this angle here and we're going to take this angle here and we're going to match these up we're going to line those marks up we're going to put some glue on here and that's going to give us the offset that we need do you see that uh, some people before they do all this glue up they like to take their neck template if they have one lay it on here again the center marks are really important i would put the line here like so i can line that up uh, I can cut out my headstock. It's a little bit easier to do that uh, before you glue this on. But again, we just put that on there like that. Clamp it down. Make sure everything is lined up. Again, those marks are really important. And that's how they're done. Okay, I'm putting some tight bond on the neck board I'll do the same thing on the underside of the headstock and then I'm going to put that on there like this now, I want to show you something here this is the glue is wet it's on an angle so if you let it do its thing it's going to drift down and it will do that even with a clamp on it so if I put this clamp on and I don't pay attention I might come back in an hour and find out that this has slipped down in the gluing process and I've got myself a mess and I don't want that so did you ever notice that there's holes in your worktop bench those are for these pegs which you can put there to line all this up until the glue sets okay there's the underside I can take a pencil with a piece of paper towel on it and get some of that excess glue off of there. I want to make sure again that those marks are lined up good um, and that this doesn't drift down. It has a tendency to do that. Um, I think you're going to see this neck showing up in the future on some oddball roots type blues instrument that you might not have seen me make before there's a hint right there in the background somewhere but anyway look for that in the future now it's just watching glue dry all right little john henry by do rag there yeah you can't live without that anyway that's the end of this episode housekeeping don't forget give me a like if you don't like it Oh, well, too bad. Just give me a like anyway. Subscribe to my channel with that little round button in the middle. And then there are links to my playlist. I'm going to give you a link to uh, Do Rag here. Uh, it'll be down in the comments and also up in the iCard. So, see you next time.